Well, good morning to you. I'm in the kitchen, not unusual in itself. I'm doing a little um, breakfast um, dish, and this is out of a wartime cookbook. I use them probably every week. Uh, the three in the set, it's called Post War Kitchen, and it's by Marguerite Patton. The recipes aren't, but she's put a whole book together of different recipes that were found during the war, um, before the war, um, after the war, after rationing, um, and it sort of spreads from sort of um, very early sort of um, 1920s all the way through to post-war sort of after 45. And they are great recipes. I have to say there are some fantastic ideas not um, overly complicated because you didn't have the items to be complicated there are substitutions because you wouldn't have been able to get certain foods and types of food limited on meats uh, limited on bread and um, lots of things like eggs um, a lot of recipes have dried eggs i'm not a great lover of dried egg have tried it i've made cakes with it but uh, lots of ideas um, and this is a breakfast one it's called a breakfast quickie <laughs> which is a wonderful uh, name um, and it's basically like a pancake and you a pancake stroke omelette you've got flour in the bowl in this bowl is a mixture of eggs flour milk um, pre-cooked little bacon only small slices so you wouldn't have had a lot and they're chopped up and I've added mushrooms just to give it a bit extra. I've got a hot griddle pan going on uh, with some melted butter. And all you do, I'm just going to turn it down to it's very hot, I don't want them to burn, um, is take a spoonful, dessert spoonful or tablespoon rather, and pop it on. It doesn't have to be exact. You're not looking for perfection here. You're just looking for a nice shape for it to fry up. Like a, um, if you've made drop scones, you'll know exactly where I'm coming from. Doesn't have to say, doesn't have to be perfectly round. They're going to be cooking underneath and then you flip them over. So it's a cross between a pancake and an omelette. You can put absolutely anything you've got in it, in the fridge that you want to use up. So you could have put onions, courgettes, um, tomatoes make it a little soggy. I put them on the side of the plate. And all you do is just sort of push them around a bit just to get them a little loose. And then, ooh, you flip them over. And that's it. It's as simple as that. That's the next one. And they come out brown, crispy. As I say, you could put anything in them. You could also make them sweet. Um, I've never done it, but I can't see why you couldn't make them sweet. More like a little pancake, so you could put some fruit. Fruit makes it a little bit soggy, but um, that could work. Oh, I added a little bit of cheese because I've got a little bit in to use up. Um, I've done this with a full cooked breakfast. I've just done it on its own with some tomatoes, which I'm having today. But it's a great cookbook. I'm going to do lots more for you in here. And there is a very yummy um, type of chocolate biscuit. And it's called the Economical Bourbon Biscuit. And trust me, they taste like bourbon biscuits. They look like bourbon biscuits. And they're great fun to make. And they last well, in theory, they should last ages in your cupboard. But I have a very six foot four high mouse who likes them. So I don't make them very often. <laughs> I think we're nearly there. I think I may have turned it down just a tad. So there's lots of lovely recipes. There are snacks. There are breakfast. There are lovely pictures. Examples of pictures. Lovely stories why food was um, having the issues and the rationing, lovely little um, 
posters that were throughout the war, which you can see a great place to go is the Imperial War Museum in Lambeth in central London. And they always have really good exhibitions. They've got a Blitz exhibition and Anderson shelter. If you're into the war time theme, then it's for you. I've got an almost identical Kenwood mixer. Uh, it's only my um, second I've ever had. Um, and they last in a lifetime. They have lovely funny adverts. And this is up to 1953. Um, and the Coronation, Coronation Chicken. That's where Coronation Chicken came from, if you didn't know that. So there we are. They are almost done. I'm just going to flip them back just to get the other side. I was a bit premature on flipping them. <laughs> I say they're an odd shape. They don't have to be perfect and I'm going to have them with sliced tomato which I've done. I've added a little black pepper and a little salt. You could spice them up. They could be spicy breakfast little frit fritters is probably the best phrase for them. Mm. So I think you're probably done. Yes, fritter. I like that. I think that's a good term. Um, if you're a BBC T well, it's ITV watcher actually on um, English TV there's a, a series called Home Fires at the moment which I'm watching which is based around wartime uh, filmed in Cheshire all to do with sort of the wartime the clothes the hair the food it's my era and I absolutely love it so there we are on the plate I've got the three plus the chopped tomatoes and that's all in one to enjoy as a breakfast. So I'm going to go off and eat my lovely wartime breakfast quickie. And I will see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe and notify and you'll see all my lovely videos. Um, I've got a fantastic Amazon order arriving over the next couple of days. And I will share what I've bought from there. A lot of kitchen stuff couple of little outfits that you'll quite like and uh, I will see you soon with those so you have a wonderful rest of a sunny day well it is with me I hope it is with you